trivia time, deathlings. Is this object A, a William Sonoma designer egg poaching pod? B, a refurbished upcycled sake glass? C, tiny whimsical hat? Or D, none of the above? If you guessed D, none of the above, you might already be mortal, ultimately doomed to die. When you cremate someone, what happens to all the stuff in their body, like titanium hips and breast implants? Funny you should ask, because the subject of your trivia question is actually the socket from a replacement hip post-cremation. This is what the implant looks like going into the living body. Shiny. Medical. And this is what it looks like after the cremation. Going through the 1500 degree process makes it look, I think, real purdy. If you're a regular watcher of Ask a Mortician, you know that after a cremation, all that's left is a pile of inorganic bones. Everything else, hair, clothes, organs, burns away except metal. Before the bones are ground down to make what we recognize as ashes or cremated remains, the metal has to be removed, either by hand or by a large magnet. So what does the crematory do with this metal? Well, it's not handled as biological waste because it was never really part of the body to begin with. The family is totally welcome to ask for the pieces back, but I've gotten that request exactly zero times. My father has had to have both of his knees replaced, and if we decide to cremate him, guess what his beloved daughter will be keeping on her mantelpiece? I love you, Papa. For years, hip and knee plants were mostly tossed by the crematory, but now there are companies in both the US and Europe that recycle them. The titanium, cobalt, stainless steel are melted down to make road signs, plane parts, car parts, etc. Many states had to put laws in place that were like, okay, crematory, if there's money being made off this metal, you can decide what charity it goes to, but you can't directly make money off of it because that's hella ghoulish. I suppose charitable programs are a more noble option than my upcycled hipster sake glasses. Hipster. Hipster. You get it? Why does no one understand my vision? As for other things in the body, pacemakers usually never make it into the cremation machine because the batteries in them and the intense heat can cause you know, a go boom, and that can hurt the cremation machine or the crematory operator's precious face. When I was a crematory operator, I would never trust the authorization form to tell me whether or not a person had a pacemaker. I would usually feel on their chest because usually they're sticking out and then go in with a scalpel to remove it. In France in the late 1990s, a man died and there was a widow who signed his cremation authorization form and checked no or no, presumably, because France, on the pacemaker part, and he did have a pacemaker, and it exploded, and the crematory sued her, and got 13,000 pounds in damages. Finally, your friend and mine, the silicon breast implant. Boobs and death. We got it all, folks. In practice, they're usually cremated with the body, but they have the potential to melt and leave a gelatinous goo stuck to the bottom of the machine. There's a great quote from the Cremation Association of North America that basically says, don't worry about it, it's no big deal, which is not them denying that it happens, just D -d -d don't worry about it, we'll, we'll scrape the goo off the bottom of the machine. We're death professionals. Do you like nitty gritty behind the scenes details from the death industry? Have I got the book for you? Oh, it's my book, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. 
okay, there's no way not to do that awkwardly. But this book comes out in three weeks and I worked on it for six years. Why? And you can pre-order it and have it delivered to you the day that it comes out. You can click on the link that I might be able to figure out how to put on the screen. And if not, I'll put it in the description below.